Hello, this is Christy Strickler for GetItScrap.com. In this video, we're going to talk about how you can let pattern paper and color decide your scrapbook page story. If you're a pattern paper lover, you've surely got a big stash of papers calling to you. You can challenge yourself to shake up your scrapbooking page storytelling process by starting with a pattern paper and color before your photos or your story. It will give you a chance to play with new techniques and products and yield unexpected story angles. There's going to be a few key takeaways that you're going to notice with all the layouts we're going to see today, but it's especially true for the first three layout samples that we have from the Get It Scrap Creative team. The first of which is that you can use pattern paper to help you choose your photo. So pattern paper first and then it will guide you to that photo choice. The second big takeaway is that you can use pattern paper to guide your supply choices. So pay attention to how the Get It Scrap team does that here. Our first layout is by Marsha Fortunato and she says, I got this background paper in a recent scrapbook kit and I immediately thought it would work well on a layout using a photo of a sunset. This page shows a photo I took of a beautiful summer sunset and the journaling speaks of how happy I was that I was able to finally get a sunset photo unobstructed by the trees. I paired this photo with the background paper since it had similar tones of pink and then I selected a turquoise paper to use as a mat for the photo. I felt it still needed more grounding so I stamped with inks in the colors that are in the photo. Finally, I cut the title from watercolor paper and painted it to coordinate with the photo. So she starts with the paper because it's similar to the photo and then she lets it kind of guide the tones of pink that she uses and the color of contrast that she uses for the mat. This next layout is by Marie Pierre Capistron. It continues on with the concept of color but it takes it a step further in which we're going to see the pattern bring focus or action. She says, I loved this pattern paper with oversized center pointing chevrons the first time I saw it and I thought I would need to use it with a picture on which I want to bring the viewer to focus on one particular part of the picture. The perfect picture to go with it is one of my daughter taking a fondant figurine I made on her birthday cake. The story is that I spend hours on her cake each year and I always hope we can keep it one week or so just to look at it, but her, all she wants to do is eat those figurines. The chevrons are great to highlight the act of taking the figurine. The pale pink picks up a hint of pink and the skin tones make a beautiful contrast with the blue of the other patterned papers and the cake. So again, here we have a little bit of her considering the color with the pink and with the blue to get the contrast with the pink. But her main choice of pattern paper is the chevron paper because it's an action print. So consider whether that print can bring action to a story or whether you want a more relaxed print for a relaxing story and then choose your photos based on that feeling or that action the print gives. Our third layout is by Audrey Tan and she's going to take it a step further, not just color or pattern, but rather motif. So consider if there is a certain motif you want to work with and then choose your embellishments and items based around that. She says, I was taken in by this photography themed background pattern paper and I knew I had to use it for my selfie photo project. This page is about documenting my selfie project. With a group of best friends, we churn out a selfie each week based on a theme that we make up. Hopefully at the end of this year, we will have a reflection of our selfies taken for the whole year. I go a step further and I create a page with every selfie that I make so that I have it in an album. So again, she's, she's taken that motif and then she's pulling it out and making, making all of her supply choices and her photo choice based on the motif. If you're feeling stuck, if you're not sure where to start with the pattern paper, simply go with something you like. Base it on your favorite color, for example. In this next layout, that's just what Gretchen Henninger did. And she says, I started with bold green pattern paper because green is my favorite color. I then chose a photograph of my husband and me in Iceland. When we were there, I kept saying that their national colors should be green, black, and white because these colors dominated the landscape. This photo not only has the green, black, and white landscape, but my green jacket and my husband's black jacket as well. 
So again, that's a color that she loved, and then she was able to attach that color to some photos that she took while she was on vacation. So start off, if you're stuck, with, with supplies that you're drawn to because of the color. Choosing to start with a color and then finding pattern paper to go with that color is a wonderful way for you to practice your pattern paper mixing. You can combine the different prints. You'll essentially choose one color and then either tones that are similar or colors that complement one another and you'll combine them in a new or unusual way that will allow you to create a new look but still have your own scrapbooking style. And that's something that Sue's done here. She says, I started my layout by piecing together a background of three pattern paper bands. A bold playful polka dot on the bottom, a small grid in the middle, and a tone on tone watercolor at the top. A warm color palette unites all three and a geometric border sticker completes the design. I enjoy combining patterns like this to create a new look. This page is about the baby shower for our daughter-in-law. The colors in the photos and the festive occasion were a good match for my background of color and pattern. This is also a great technique to use for any of those prints that you find difficult to work with because you're creating a, a background for your photo with those prints but you're not using large quantities of those prints and it makes it just a little more palatable for you if those pattern paper prints are not your current style. As scrapbookers, whether paper or digital, we all tend to collect pattern paper and it accumulates in our supplies. Sometimes we're drawn to specific patterns or colors or motifs. Sometimes we just buy more than we can use. And one of the ways that you can sort of bust your stash is to start off with pattern paper and then build your scrapbook layout around that. Choose a pattern paper print that maybe you don't like from the collection or choose something that's been sitting in your stash for a long time. And we're going to see that our next two examples, that's something that both of our creative team members did. Katie Scott says, I wanted to work with library themed papers since I am always drawn to them while shopping, but then rarely end up using them. I recently took a trip back home and photographed lots of my family's old books, which are nostalgic for me. These photos of my family's old books are a good match for these papers. I made one traditional 12 by 12 page and paired it with a pocketed 12 by 12 page since I had lots of photos that I wanted to include. Our last layout is by Debbie Hodge and she's also doing some stash busting. Debbie says, I bought these outdoor themed papers last Friday and challenged myself to use them over the weekend. I am finishing up an album for my mom of our time together in 2013 and these photos of water fights were okay, but I wasn't sure that I would scrapbook them. I had so many photos and it seems that I scrapbook this topic every year. These photos really weren't grabbing me. The targets on the papers though, gave these photos great energy and I'm so glad I scrapbooked them. In this case, Debbie had these papers that had not been sitting in her supplies for very long. But what they did for her, they inspired her to scrapbook regular photos that she, she had worked with many times before. So you can use newer scrapbook pattern paper prints to sort of give new life to old stories. And that's a great way to use them before they, the papers end up sitting in your stash and those photos just sit in your library. Now that you have seen how our creative team uses pattern paper and color to start their scrapbook layouts, it's time for you to take a turn. If you're not yet feeling comfortable with working with different pattern paper prints, you can go for tips and ideas on the Get It Scrap blog and within the Get It Scrap membership. For more inspiration, visit getitscrapped.com slash blog.